America is just a word. What it means in the wasteland will depend on who you ask. Liberty, innovation, decadence, ruin. America is all these things. But if by chance you happened upon someone old enough to have lived in the glory that was pre-war America, someone whose memory had not been tainted by the centuries, they might tell you that the truest expression of the nation was not some high ideal or grand rhetoric, but available for purchase in nearly every vending machine in the free world. They might tell you that in the end, what America was really all about was a refreshing drink served up in a frosted glass bottle on a hot day. Just so long as that drink and that bottle were provided by the Nuka-Cola Corporation, the days would grow hot on their own. At the peak of its international market share, the Nuka-Cola Corporation was a massive conglomerate with operations, divisions, and subsidiaries engaged in everything from syrups and concentrates to theme parks and atomic energy. Its tremendous success derived from its flagship product, Nuka-Cola, a non-alcoholic beverage that had become intertwined with the American national identity. Its role in American soft power was exploited by the federal government, a relationship leveraged by the company in turn to acquire favorable deals and reduce oversight. Just prior to the outbreak of the Great War, the Nuka-Cola Corporation had been linked to accusations of secret weapons programs and corporate warfare, but any investigations were never completed. In the modern wastelands, it remains a powerful symbol evoking nostalgia for the old world and the enduring idea of America itself. The Nuka-Cola Corporation first entered the soft drink market in 2044. The formula behind their eponymous product was the result of two years of refinement by amateur chemist John Caleb Bradburton and his team of self-styled beverages. It was an instant success. Within only a year, it had displaced even the established brands to become the most popular beverage in the United States. Just a few years after that, this overwhelming demand was replicated all across the free world. Criticism was leveled against Bradburton's formula. A single serving of Nuka-Cola contained 120% of the daily recommended allowance of sugar, but the success of the product overwhelmed its detractors. In just a few years, the corporation had become an economic giant. Bradburton was elevated to a national business icon and according to company law, was moved by the public's love of his soft drink to create Nuka World, the world's first soda-themed amusement park. Its gates opened in 2050, and despite featuring only a few attractions, the park was an instant success. Expansions and additions were developed across the ensuing years, along with plans for other Nuka World locations across the country. To maintain their overwhelming dominance across the market, Brad Burton and his beverageers continued to experiment with their original formula. Cherry, grape, and orange variants were among the first produced, and in each case were intended to challenge specific products from their main competitors. When this direct approach faltered, the Nuka-Cola Corporation pursued aggressive, usually hostile takeovers of rival companies. With immense amounts of essentially free marketing generated by its theme parks, combined with its vast capital reserves that the company could mobilize, only in rare cases did rival products avoid falling under the Nuka-Cola corporate umbrella. Its omnipresent role in American life made Nuka-Cola far more than just a household name. By the early 2060s, a combination of timely marketing and strategic placements turned the drink into a cultural icon, one that aligned with the grand narrative of innovation and progress promoted by the federal government. Nuka-Cola costumes and other branded merchandise routinely sold out, while its mascots, Bottle and Cappy, became some of the most recognizable figures in popular culture. The mutually beneficial relationship between the Nuka-Cola Corporation and the US government blossomed in the final years leading up to the Sino-American War. 
federal authorities were eager to exploit the brand's widespread appeal by infusing patriotic messages into its already ubiquitous advertisements. In return, the corporation was awarded massively lucrative government contracts, and regulatory bodies were pressured to turn a blind eye towards many of the company's activities. The outbreak of open warfare with the People's Republic of China in 2067 propelled this partnership even further. Though outwardly merely a soft drink company, John Caleb Bradburton and his team of beverageers had come to represent some of the most talented chemists in the nation. Wartime censorship swiftly buried any details of this evolving partnership, though rumors persisted that the beverageers were consulting on the development of chemical weapons in secret army research laboratories. Genetic engineering was another field in which the corporation allegedly benefited from its close relationship with the government. Safari Adventure, considered at the time to be the crowning achievement within the Nuka World portfolio, featured hundreds of exotic animal specimens from around the world. This new addition to their premier theme park was another instant hit but dogged by speculation of covert animal experimentation taking place in hidden underground facilities. In 2072, the Nuka-Cola Corporation unveiled its last major initiative, another addition to Nuka World, this time centered on themes of interstellar discovery. Galactic Zone was designed to showcase the utopian future that American technology would provide, but as the war with China dragged on, its optimistic messaging appeared increasingly at odds with world events. This was reflected in the park itself. Through its connections with the federal government, Brad Burton had arranged for Nuka World to double as a protected shelter in the event of nuclear war. As part of this arrangement, military-grade robots were incorporated into the park's security, disguised as harmless replicas and paraded as attractions in their own right. In the final years of its existence, the Nuka-Cola Corporation struggled to survive the increasing uncertainty brought about by the Sino-American War. As global supply chains faltered and civil society began to collapse, the fortunes of the company dwindled. Budgets were slashed in every department, while the rollout of Nuka-Cola Victory and Nuka-Cola Quantum, the last variations in its flagship product line, were not enough to revive the corporation's fading prospects. On October 23, 2077, the company simply evaporated in the global nuclear exchange that would come to be known as the Great War. In the modern wastelands, the legacy of the Nuka-Cola Corporation is expressed through tattered, faded billboards and bottle caps elevated to the status of currency. But even 200 years after the last Nuka-Cola was bottled, Entire pallets of the drink can still be found in relative abundance. Such was the thirst of the pre-war population that even the limited supply not destroyed in the Great War has been more than enough to provide for the scattered survivors. For most, it is the only tangible connection to their past they are likely to find, a fleeting taste of what America once was. But the Nuka-Cola Corporation was far more than just a popular soft drink. Though it presented itself as the ideal American company, bubbly and optimistic, in its later years, this was increasingly a facade behind which lay a labyrinth of secret deals and backroom arrangements. Brad Burton himself was rumored to be at the center of it all, embezzling unthinkable sums of money from his own company to fund a personal obsession with achieving immortality. Some even speculate he succeeded, trading the underlying formula behind Nuka-Cola Quantum to the government in exchange for what he desired. Whether there is any truth to this at all, or if it is merely a story to make the wasteland less dreary, will depend on who you ask. All that can be said with any certainty is that the days are growing hot once again. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, 
consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. Thank you.